This is the Metro Weekly Podcast. We continue our coverage of the 2024 presidential election today, with a couple of posts. First, LGBTQ groups rally behind Kamala Harris. And then, losing its mind over Kamala Harris, Mag Gus stoops to ugly name-calling. We begin with LGBTQ organizations rallied behind Kamala Harris following President Biden's withdrawal from the 2024 presidential race. By John Riley on July 22, 2024. Following President Joseph R. Biden's announcement on Sunday that he would be dropping out of this year's presidential race, many of the groups that were most fervently in his camp, including LGBTQ organizations, voiced their support for Vice President Kamala Harris. Biden abandoned his re-election bid after relentless pressure from party insiders and weeks of panicking from liberal activists following his disastrous performance against Donald Trump in a televised debate on June 27. For weeks, pundits, aided by the mainstream media, called into question President Biden's age, physical fitness, and mental acuity, questioning whether the 81-year-old president could withstand the rigors of campaigning and whether he was the candidate best suited to articulate the Democratic Party's message and stances on various issues. Saying it was in the best interest of my party and the country to withdraw from the race, Biden noted he would remain in office and focus on fulfilling his duties as president for the remainder of his term, which expires on January 20, 2025. He called serving as president the greatest honor of my life, and indicated, in a separate social media post, that he was throwing his support behind sitting Vice President Kamala Harris for the party's nomination. Speaking from its position as the nation's largest LGBTQ political advocacy organization, the human rights campaign enthusiastically endorsed Harris while thanking Biden for his long-standing support of the LGBTQ community. We are deeply grateful to President Biden for his more than 50 years of public service and his longtime support for the LGBTQ plus community, HRC President Kelly Robinson said in a statement. Today's announcement reflects what President Biden has done his entire career and will be core to his legacy, putting the needs of Americans and his country above his own. We owe the Biden-Harris team a debt of gratitude for leading the country out of a state of chaos and constant crisis under former President Trump. Calling Harris a trailblazer and a champion for LGBTQ plus equality dating back to her time as District Attorney of San Francisco, Robinson also noted that the Biden-Harris administration has adopted a number of pro-LGBTQ policy positions, including support for the Respect for Marriage Act, which Biden signed into law in 2022, rules protecting LGBTQ youth from harassment in schools, appointing more than 200 LGBTQ people to various government positions, and nominating several LGBTQ judges to to the federal bench. Convicted felon Donald Trump has already shown that he aims to destroy democracy and divide the country in his quest for power, Robinson said. Vice President Kamala Harris is a true champion of unity and accountability, and will fight for a country where no one is above the law and justice for all means something. The human rights campaign could not be prouder to endorse Vice President Kamala Harris and commit to channeling our resources and supporters to work to elect the first black and South Asian woman president of the United States. Kiera Johnson, executive director of the National LGBTQ Task Force Action Fund, echoed similar sentiments, thanking Biden for being an ally to LGBTQ communities and for the pro-LGBTQ policies advanced by his administration. At this critical moment for our democracy and our freedoms, we have both hope and excitement for Vice President Kamala Harris and what she can do for our country, Johnson said in a statement. We fully expect a continued commitment to always putting our communities first. We now recommit to moving forward in the democratic process, the upcoming convention and the November elections. WAPAC, the National LGBTQ Political Action Committee advocating for the election of LGBTQ women and non-binary candidates to political office, thanked Biden for his efforts to advance LGBTQ equality while in office and praised his decision to withdraw from the race as selfless, foregoing his own political ambitions for the betterment of his party and the country as a whole. WAPAC is grateful for President Biden's leadership and the positive impact he has had on the LGBTQ community, Janelle Perez, the interim executive director of WAPAC, said in a statement. We thank him for his service and dedication to advancing equality and justice for all. President Joe Biden is a patriot and a true believer in our democratic republic. His lifetime of public service has inspired many and this act, stepping away from our party's nomination, will help cement his strong legacy, U.S. reps. 
Mark Ticano, Democrat of California, and Richie Torres, Democrat of NY, the co-chairs of Equality PAC, the campaign arm of the Congressional Equality Caucus, said in a statement. Calling Biden the most pro-LGBTQ president in American history, Equality PAC hailed Biden's record of accomplishment. It promised to focus its efforts on rallying behind Harris and defeating Trump in the general election. From her days as Attorney General of California, Vice President Harris has staunchly defended the LGBTQ community, making sure our rights were not only protected but enshrined into law, the organization said in a statement. We look forward to working with her in the next administration, alongside a new pro-equality majority in the House, to pass the Equality Act and ensure all LGBTQ Americans have equal rights under the law. For now, Biden remains in office, although it is unclear whether doing so will impede Democrats' electoral chances in the fall. Already, Republicans, including Trump, have attacked elected Democrats for allegedly concealing Biden's decline, casting them not only as dishonest, but unfit to lead. Still others have questioned whether Biden should remain in office if he is unable to campaign, characterizing the time spent on the campaign trail as an easy lift compared to his regular presidential duties. U.S. Rep. Nancy Mace, Republican of SC, has promised to introduce a resolution calling on Harris and members of the presidential cabinet to invoke Section 4 of the 25th Amendment to declare Biden incapable of executing the duties of his office and begin the process of removing him from office. The second half of our news coverage today ends with Right-wingers can't resist attacking Kamala Harris with sexualized memes and misogynist rhetoric as she prepares to run for president. By John Riley on July 23, 2024. The frontrunner status of Vice President Kamala Harris as she seeks the Democratic Party's presidential nomination has led right-wingers to lose what little self-control they already possessed. Rather than focus on issues where Harris, President Joe Biden, or the Democratic Party, in general, might be weak, MAGA trolls and pundits, especially those on social media, have decided to play to their base and employ various sexist, sexualized, and misogynistic attacks. The most common refrain echoed by conservatives is that Harris is a DEI hire, based on the assertion that she was only selected as vice president due to her race and gender, as well as claims that she lacks intelligence and is otherwise unqualified to be president. Harris's critics leave out that, prior to becoming the duly elected vice president, she served as the duly elected district attorney for San Francisco, the duly elected attorney general for the state of California, and the duly elected U.S. senator for California, which happens to be the nation's largest state and home to the world's fifth largest economy. MAGA pundit Matt Walsh has gleefully circulated the accusation that Harris owes her political career to a short relationship she had with Willie Brown, the former mayor of San Francisco. Both Harris and Brown have acknowledged the relationship but downplayed it as largely irrelevant, especially with regard to Harris's professional career, which started in 1990 when she was working for the Alameda County District Attorney's Office, not in Brown's home base of San Francisco, according to a fact check by Reuters. Kamala Harris got her start in politics by sleeping with Willie Brown, Walsh wrote on X. She became vice president because Biden needed a non-white female on the ticket. She's made a career out of begging for handouts from powerful men. Kamala Harris is a little whore and that Tulsi Gabbard exposed her in 2020. Truth Hurts, Gomez captioned the video post, referencing Gabbard, a former U.S. congresswoman from Hawaii who spends much of her time appearing on conservative media to attack the Democratic Party. Others started circulating a video clip from 2021 featuring Republican presidential candidate J.D. Vance, in which the then-candidate for the U.S. Senate told Fox News host Tucker Carlson that Harris and other prominent Democrats should be disqualified from running the country because they do not have any biological children, a statement in keeping with Vance's anti-abortion, pro-natalist views. We're effectively run in this country, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they made, and so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too, Vance said. It's just a basic fact, he continued. You have Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Ock, U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat of NY, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. How does that make any sense when we've turned our country over to people who don't have a direct stake in it? Vance made nearly identical comments at a conservative conference organized by the Intercollegiate Studies Institute in Alexandria, Virginia, that same year, disparaging Harris and other Democrats as the childless left, regardless of the fact that Harris has two stepchildren. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, another target of that same rant, has two adopted children who Vance apparently views as not legitimate, in keeping with his opposition to LGBTQ rights. 
The barrage of hateful social media posts about Harris shows no signs of abating, with some users posting memes sexualizing Harris. One post compares Harris to the Hawk Twa girl, a woman who has become part of internet lore after a video of her making glib comments about engaging in fellatio went viral. Right-wing pundit Constantine Kisson referred to Harris's sole qualification as having a vagina of color, while another user, responding to a Harris-supportive post from Colorado Governor Jared Polis, referred to the vice president in Buttigieg, whose name has been floated as a possible running mate, as the blowjob ticket. One political cartoonist made a comic of Harris preparing to fell at the Washington Monument, while another made a post suggesting that Harris would perform sexual acts in exchange for votes. A left-wing user compiled a series of memes, including fake campaign logos, shared on multiple accounts sexualizing Harris or implying she is sexually loose. Defenders of those memes have jumped on board, claiming that the attacks aren't sexist, they're just specifically targeting Harris. Explain to me how criticizing Harris for how she got her job somehow has anything to do with other women? Most women don't sleep their way to the top. You lumping her in with other women is gross on your part, wrote one user. Left-wing commenters have already hit back at the attacks. We aren't racist or sexist says the party that immediately makes racist jokes about black presidential nominees and sexist jokes about female presidential nominees, wrote one user. Watch them lose this election and then dedicate a plank in their party platform for repealing the 19th Amendment, another user said of Republicans. The fit they'll throw if they lose to Kamala will be legendary, wrote a third. Thanks for listening. Read more stories like this by visiting MetroWeekly.com. And if you enjoyed these stories, please hit like, comment, follow and subscribe. We appreciate your effort to help us grow.